first trick you turn is the hardest. But after a while, you just get in the car and you let the John drive. That's a prostitution metaphor. It's rough language. Satan doesn't care how he gets us separated from God. He doesn't care. He has a limited toolkit. He can distract, distort, depress. He has specific techniques. He uses sex and money, power, avarice, greed, hatred, rage. He has a whole series of little tricks he can pull, them big tricks. When people, by degree, say, tell a lie, and they get away with it, and they get an endorphin rush, and dopamine rush, and a power rush, and hey, I got away with it. And the devil steps in to say, look how smart you are. And after all, it's not that bad. You're not worse than them. You're not worse than that guy. And so the lies multiply. And sometimes the lies are so, so fired so quickly that it almost goes past us. If you heard the AFR top of the hour news, you heard, of course, that President Trump is being brought up on trial or in trial this time for business fraud because they've contended that the president lied about his wealth. So let's think about this. A judge and a jury know more about the value of real estate than Goldman Sachs. No. No, they don't. President Trump paid back his loans through mar largo uh, The Goldman Sachs people, they know money. In fact, I might say, and I can't say this across the board because there's individuals who work there who may well know the Lord. I would say that at the top, they serve money. That's what they serve. I know there's people in there who know the Lord. I don't know how they do it. They keep their soul, but some people are capable of doing that because with God, all things are possible. So we speak truth. Let's speak some truth that Gavin Newsom, he's, 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 he's not a governor. He's a dictator. He showed that throughout the COVID response. He is also speaking blunt truth. He's a racist and a sexist, or is he? I, I think he's just a cold opportunist who serves power. One of those tools that Satan has is sex and power. Gavin Newsom is accused of sleeping with his campaign manager's wife during the campaign. That, that That's sure to create a wedge between you and God if, if Gavin Newsom's ever known the Lord. Oh, no. I did it again. I dug a hole. Now I have to pray for Gavin Newsom. And if you, in your heart, mean what you say about the faith, then we all have to pray for Gavin Newsom. That's hard, particularly to do it sincerely. I mean, to mouth the words, well, that makes us hypocrites. So maybe you'll join me in another little prayer. Father God, where we are unable to love the soul of Gavin Newsom, not the flesh, and we're unable to sincerely pray that he would no longer be a spiritual captive. Please help the Holy Spirit, Lord. Please work with the Holy Spirit to change us that we can sincerely pray for that soul called Gavin Newsom. Because you tell us that we are to love our enemies and in fact to pray for the spiritual captives. Ask this in Jesus' name, amen. He is either a racist and a sexist or a cold opportunist But there's this, I think observationally we can say that Gavin Newsom has no relationship to truth at all. Gavin Newsom has has said that he's going to replace uh, as one of the the senators in California, Dianne Feinstein, who has died and has received, well, we'll say that later. A woman named LaFonza Butler is going to now be a senator from California, which means she'll have to move. Her most recent filing of federal paperwork, her FEC filing 31 days ago, lists Maryland as her residence. (laughs) But she gets to be a senator, quote, from California. 
Well, that makes sense because we just heard at the top of the hour news, Kevin McCarthy referred to as a congressman from California. Well, he has a place there. He visits. He's not from there. Not anymore. He's from D.C. Now, this woman, LaFonza Butler, is also black. And Gavin Newsom is a racist. He said he would nominate a black woman. Oh, she's also same-sex attracted and a trusted advisor to Vice President Cammie Harris, who is, well, let me take that back. I was going to say not black, but then again, she changed her racial identity some time ago. Now she, no, no, for many years, she'd been an Eastern Indian, but then she changed and now she's black. <laughs> when we speak truth, when we make an effort to take our world and to speak truth about it and around it, how quickly can we get confused? Well, if we stay grounded in the spirit, we're not confused. The chaos that's being inserted into our world, now who would want that? God is a God of order. You can see it in night being separate from day, waters being separated from the land. You can see it in our non-circular elliptical orbit. You can see it in the arrangement of the Earth to the universe. We are the only planet with a direct, unobstructed view of the Milky Way. We are the only planet from which you could observe the entire universe through the Milky Way. Everything else is obstructed, but not ours. God is a God of order. He's also not a God of racism. There are efforts, of course, to make God appear racist. One of the ways that they do this, so this is very, very popular uh, in religious left circles, particularly the sexual left circle. The sexual left, what does that mean? It means people who operate in politics with the sole purpose of sexualizing others and of normalizing behaviors outside of God's design for human sexual interaction and particularly concentrated on kids and there is no limit absolutely no limit to their desire to distort things none well because when nothing is forbidden all things are allowed so they take this story of the Syrophoenician woman and they twist it and the Syrophoenician woman, of course, Jesus was talking with her about salvation, and she referenced scraps from the table, and don't even the dogs, and you know the you know the scripture, right? Don't even the dogs get. And it's construed that Jesus changed his mind. Yes, okay, you can have the salvation. But did Jesus change his mind, or was he doing what he did so often, which was asking for a decision, asking for a commitment, asking for an act of faith, asking for an expression of faith, as he did so often, just even the man at the pool, do you want to be cured? And asking for a profession of faith, a profession of request. God didn't change his mind. He helped change that woman's mind. In the world of the sexual left, they say that that passage gives them hope that one day God will say, you know what? I rethought homosexuality. You guys are right. I was wrong. But then that would ignore all of the physical effects of carrying out homosexual acts, particularly male to male over many, many years. And I will not go further than that other than to say it's not good medically at all. That's weird, isn't it? By letting God's physical loss leads to physical harm. So there's also attempts to make the Bible racist. We know this because there's references to slave and master and that, uh, that, that slaves and, and, and servants should follow their master. And that when you look at the way slave and master related at that time, what was Jesus really talking about? Well, in the case of masters and servants, he's really talking about employees. In the case of slaves, he so often refers to the Apostle Paul to himself as a slave to Christ. And on the topic of actual racism, how does God view this? Well, he created all of us. There was a time, Gentile and Jew, Jews were designed to be a priesthood to us. 
And yet so often they turn their back on the Lord and we are grafted on. Us Gentiles are grafted onto the family through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's not racism. There's tribalism. So when you go to the heart of the lie and the lies in this culture and so much of the confusion being injected into this culture, you can end up with stories like this. Do you remember this professor who threatens to hack up a New York Post reporter with a machete? She's been hired by another college. Yeah, the, the New York Post reports that several Cooper, Cooper Union students said it's crazy that their university has hired a professor who wants that and should chop up a reporter with her machete. I don't think it's such a person should be here, said one student when asked about Professor Shalene Rodriguez beginning her new job at the school located in New York's New York City's East Village. And that's that's exactly what she did. She threatened to chop a guy up. But 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 please understand this. She is oppressed because of the color of her skin. So on the topic of racism, how much more racism is being invented? And what do we uncover when we start to look at a government that wants a larger supply of white supremacy, but is unable to find it, and so begins producing it? Plus, a pastor at a church in Atlanta contended to help solve racial ills did he do the right thing? We'll talk about it. This is a Disciples View. I'm Todd Herman. This is Viewpoints with Kirby Anderson. Michael Brown predicts the coming collapse of our secular universities. While it is true that a major university with hefty endowments will survive, he makes the same prediction I've been making for many years and adds some other reasons for the future decline in numbers and influence of universities. First, there has been a serious dip in enrollment in our colleges and universities across the nation.